So let's continue with uh, our previous presentation. So this is uh, the main form of the application uh, where we see the grid of icons, uh, pictures taken with the application by the various people using it and they appear in the photos form, uh, form titled with photos. And as you can see, it's a pretty simple layout. Notice that we create a grid layout. The grid layout arranges elements in a uniform grid. But you will notice it's only a grid of one by one, which doesn't really make much sense until you read the two lines below, where we define it as an auto-fit grid, which means the grid will try to take up as much space as it reasonably can. So it will become a one by two grid, a one by three grid, etc and it will change based on device orientation. So if we turn the device uh, on its side, uh, the grid will add more columns. If we turn it back to portrait mode, it will have less. And you will notice we make the grid scrollable. And then later on, uh, and the border layout, which we set to the actual form, essentially disables the default scrollability over there within the form. And the reason for that is that we'll later on replace the grid dynamically with an image viewer when we uh, enter a specific button. So that's very useful to remember. Now, you might also recall from the demo where we did a pull to refresh sort of effect. This effect is built into Codename 1. And to do that, all we need to do is invoke the method add pull to refresh. And the run method will be invoked when the pull to refresh action is actually performed. Uh, so, and the nice thing is, because of that, we just created a refresh grid method, which does all the heavy lifting, and we'll read it uh, soon enough. And that refresh grid method actually populates the grid with all the data. So the pull to refresh just really reinvokes that method and makes sure the grid is uh, repopulated, essentially. Uh, Notice that we initially add an infinite progress, which will later on be removed by the refresh grid. The infinite progress is just this wheel that's, that rotates around uh, to, to indicate a sort of uh, uh, infinitely going process sort of thing. So, ah, one last thing I forgot. There is an add command call. Commands are essentially the thing on the top right uh, section or the back command. They allow you to sort of add, uh, well, actions to the title bar and to various things. They're very useful and used commonly in Codename 1. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the resulting UI. As you can see, the title photos, the take picture command, which is uh, uh, there, and uh, the grid that's dynamically created. So let's look at how the grid is actually created. So technically, it's created by just invoking a web service to get the list of the photos. Notice we're using the async version and not the sync version. And the reason is that we don't want to block the EDT necessarily, even if it's invoke and block, uh, when we're showing a new form. We draw the, the form shows and that this just goes through. So in this particular case, I decided to go with uh, the async version. Uh, it might have worked without the async version, but sometimes uh, uh, I still prefer to use that approach. It's mostly a matter of taste, but also sometimes in unique cases, it's a matter of uh, application flow. Now, you'll notice that every time we, we remove all the components from the grid and then we populate them with buttons, uh, the create image button is where we do a lot of the work creating the actual image and also popping open the image viewer, which we'll show you soon. Notice the image list uh, creation right above the loop. The image list creation shows uh, uh, is essentially a model for uh, the image viewer which will allow us to flip through it later on and that's a very interesting thing. Notice another thing. Uh, we invoke a method called animate layout and wait. Uh, animate layout essentially um, performs that animation where the buttons sort of slide into place. Now, that's not just uh, something to make everything look pretty, it's, although it does. Uh, its main cause is to validate the layout. 
when you change things, when you add a component, we don't reflect that in the UI. So you need to actually invoke a method called revalidate in order to lay out the components. But instead of invoking that revalidate, you can just invoke animate layout and that will sort of animate things into place. Uh, and it will do, do the substitute. Now the reason we require uh, this sort of approach and don't just uh, automatically lay out things like HTML does is that this is far more performant and that is part of our performance advantage over HTML. HTML doesn't know when uh, you finished adding things and neither do we because we're not familiar with your code. Uh, so we need you to tell us that you've finished adding components and then we do the reflow only once and because that's a very expensive operation so we don't want to constantly reflow the UI. So here's uh, the actual code to create a button as we saw the, the button creation over there and technically what we do here is relatively simple. We create a new button and we use a, a class called URL image, which is a really simple uh, image type that knows how to fetch an image from a URL. Uh, you will notice that the image is cached to the file system. So we accept a file system storage path to the home directory where we have uh, the thumbnail. So that way, if uh, the application is launched and we already downloaded that image, we'll just fetch it from the file system instead of going to the network, which is far cheaper in terms of performance. Uh, it seamlessly downloads, it seam seamlessly stores everything and places it in the grid. Uh, now, the action of the button, you know, you'll notice we bind the action listener and uh, inside that we open an image viewer based on the image list that we gave earlier. Now, the image viewer allows us to flip using touch and to scale images to sort of zoom in, zoom out, etc. And you'll notice that we create an image viewer that allows us to flip through components. And that's a really nice thing, but there's another very interesting thing that we do here. You'll notice that the layout for the container that in which we place the image viewer is a layered layout. Layered layout is something special. It allows us to place uh, containers or components one on top of another in a sort of uh, layers like a page. And that allows the image uh, in the image viewer to uh, reside below the toolbar. So the toolbar sort of is on top of, uh, you'll notice the toolbar we add below, is on, it's on top of the image viewer and not uh, below it. So you actually can see the image beneath the toolbar and that, that provides a really nice and useful effect. You'll also notice the like count is on top of the image. Uh, so you can actually see the likes and also see the image below that and we don't waste screen real estate. We actually can show uh, more data that way. Uh, okay. You will notice this is the animation that goes into the image viewer mode. And it's running here uh, a few times to illustrate that sort of effect. Uh, obviously, it's a bit skippy because of the presentation, but you get the general uh, drift of it. So let's move on to the capture photo command as you'll notice we create a command Co commands can have icons and text associated with them and they're essentially very similar to uh, any event you would normally have uh, with an action listener but they're more decoupled they're not necessarily tied to a button although they can be they can be tied uh, to many things within uh, the interface specifically uh, to native menus and things like that so here we create a command in order to take a picture. And this is a really simple tool. You'll notice that capturing a photo from the camera is just capture photo. And you don't need to give the arguments to the command, to the method, but we do because we want the photo to be uh, 1024 pixels at most and to maintain its aspect ratio, which is why we give minus one for the other dimension. 
So this allows us to upload photos that aren't too huge. And keep in mind that cameras can be pretty um, huge, 13 megapixel cameras and things like that. And they'll start uploading images to, the, to our server, they'll crash it. And besides crashing it, they'll also crash devices that are weaker that would fetch those images to preview them. So we want the images to be uh, big, but not too big. So 1024 is a relatively reasonable size, although it might be on the smallish size with today's devices, but still, it should provide enough pixels for most people. Notice that we want to upload the image. We could technically use a web service call, but the images might be pretty big. And a web service call is relatively simple. It doesn't use multi-part, so uh, it might fail when uploading to a server. Now, I won't go too much into client-server uh, architecture, but in the server, we have some code to handle a multi-part uh, submit. You can download the code of the server and look at it. It's relatively simple. There's not too much going on there. It just handles multi-part upload, stores everything in RAM. Uh, but generally, uh, if you want to upload files, you need to use multi-part request. You need to use multi-part upload. Normally, Java doesn't have it built in. Java.net URL doesn't have it built in. You actually need to uh, write code to do that, and that's really inconvenient. We decided to bundle it in as part of our network protocol stack, so you can relatively easily upload. Now, there are two things you'll notice here about this uh, class. The first is we override the read response call in the multi-part request because we want to get back uh, the key value of the multi-part request. And that's sort of a response from the server. It sort of allows us to, to get that data. But the second uh, method we override has the post response, which is a bit misleadingly named. It's uh, invoked after the response completes. It's invoked on the event dispatch thread. So it's a really convenient place to put in animations and things like that. As you recall, when I talked about the event dispatch thread, I talked about uh, the network being a uh, special case where methods callbacks are usually invoked on the network thread and not on the event dispatch thread. So post response uh, is on the event dispatch thread. So if you want to do things to read data and everything, that's okay to do in the multi-part request or any request for that matter. Uh, because we'd want um, uh, to to not block the EDT. So we can do parsing, we can do IO, we can do lots of expensive things in uh, any network request. And it won't slow down the UI. But then when we finished parsing and processing all that data, we'd want to communicate that to the UI. And the post response is very useful exactly for that purpose. So the toolbar is that sort of small toolbar you see at the bottom of, uh, of uh, the image viewer. And it's a relatively simple thing. It's just a grid with uh, four columns, uh, one for every toolbar option. And you'll notice a weird thing. I chose not to use icons in uh, this particular uh, uh, application. But the toolbar has four icons in it. But instead, I gave the buttons names that make no sense. The like button is named D. Now, the trick is I used uh, an icon font. And an icon font is a special font that has uh, an icon for a particular letter. So that, that's really convenient in adapting for various themes and all sorts of things like that. And I've placed the font inside the resource file and I'll go over some of the things in the resource file uh, later on but suffice to say that I just customized uh, the UI ID for toolbar label and defined that it will use that specific font that I picked and by using that font uh, I can set the text and it will have the right uh, label you'll notice that I invoke set UI ID Setting the UI ID uh, allows me to define the style that's uh, applied for a specific uh, button. So for instance, if I go to the, if I do set UI ID on like button and set UI ID to text field, then the button will look like a text field. 
Uh, and that allows me to theme things very easily in the designer tool, which uh, I'll demonstrate shortly. Uh, notice that uh, we have some uh, binding for events and things like that. Uh, I'll go over these briefly, but they're relatively self-explanatory. Uh, we have uh, like, which is just a method invocation uh, event binding. We've got uh, a tool that allows us to share images. Notice that uh, the share button is built in. We don't need to do anything. Share button is functionality that's native and it's built in. But we do need to give the actual image reference to the button. So the trick is actually rather simple. We add the listener to the image list model and then based on the selection we constantly update the image that we might that the user might share beforehand uh, we also have the details we just parse the result and uh, show it as a dialog not much there and the back command which essentially allows us uh, to return back to the previous form now last but not least one of the most important pieces here is the list model now uh, if you're familiar with Swing or with practically every MVC sort of uh, uh, programming model, uh, then the list model just contains the data of the images. It's a really simple interface that allows us to communicate the images to the image viewer. And there's some methods here like to add an image based on ID and things like that. But basically the interesting method here is uh, get image at get item at which fetches uh, the images dynamically as you can see using a utility method to download the full sized image uh, then load an actual image and return it notice that this tool returns almost uh, immediately we don't provide any delays and we place a placeholder in place until the data actually arrives this is hugely important <coughs> Also notice the fire data change event. And that's interesting because uh, when we change the data, we need to notify the listeners that the data has changed. Now, who are the listeners? In this case, the image viewer or the list uh, is the listener to the list model. So if the list model changes, it tracks uh, those events and propagates that onwards. Similarly, uh, the list model uh, uh, also needs to provide uh, its size and its selection. Normally, you, you'd also have a selection listener, but in this particular case, uh, we didn't need a lot of those complexities, so I made a lot of simplifications. One of the things that I uh, did perform here that's interesting is that on the selection, uh, I also update uh, the number of photo likes, which is uh, also uh, something potentially interesting. Uh, you'll notice that we just, to implement listeners, we have a special tool called Event Dispatcher, which we use when we bind uh, listeners. So the data change listeners are just added to the Event Dispatcher, and uh, that's about it. Uh, in the next section, we'll go over uh, how things look in the Codename 1 designer.